All right. Um, well, hello, everyone. And uh, thank you, Claudia, for inviting me to this important conference. Um, I'm really happy to be here. And it's amazing to see where people are tuning in from, um, places like Virginia, Montreal, the Philippines, but also um, very many interesting places in Europe. And I'm looking forward to discussing with you and, and entering a dialogue. Um, it is a great honor uh, to speak to such a distinguished audience, and I'm looking forward to our discussion. Okay, here we go. So I called it Muse, a Museum Education, Political Awareness and Youth Empowerment, and it's uh, a work in progress at this, the Berlin State Museums. Um, so let's, let's start. I work at the newly established Center for Cultural Education at the at the Berlin State Museum, the House Bastian, seen on the picture. And my job is to design, implement, and evaluate museum education's program that are called political education. Now, distinguishing between cultural education, which museums or the Berlin State Museums define that they're doing, and po political education is a very German thing to do. And in the interest of time, I would like to avoid delving into that, these two categorizations. Instead, I would like to describe my task as creating museum education programs that raise political awareness and empower young people. So, now, here are the goals. I hope you can all see them. Um, my colleagues and I have set three goals for these programs. One, that young people learn to see the museum as a space, uh, as a political space, the political space it actually is, where people negotiate and contest power, meaning, and representation. Two, that young people connect their own questions, interests, expertise, problems, or needs with a human experience they see on display in the museums and that they realist, realize that they have their own agency to make their own world just like the historical actors in different eras and cultural contexts the actors made the objects so we can trace that back and three that young people feel empowered to develop ideas for making their own world for their for their contribution to building the society they want. The central question my colleagues and I are raising is therefore, how can we use the objects in our collections to achieve these goals? What do we have to change in the museum in order to successfully run these programs? To whom in society do we have to reach out in order to build alliances and coalitions to make the necessary changes happen? not only happen, but also worthwhile and sustainable. So let me give you an example of what taking these questions seriously actually means for us and what challenges we are facing. And um, before I start doing that, just a little um, caveat. This conference is a couple of weeks too early to actually talk about first results. Um, we are just starting with our first workshops and education programs. Um, I welcome questions later about how everything is going, but I can't really tell you how this, the students or the or youth um, are reacting to what we are offering or how they're interacting with us and so on and so forth. But tomorrow, tomorrow the exhibition Germanic Tribes, Archaeological Perspectives is opening its doors to the public. It gives a state-of-the-art account of what archaeology can tell us about the Germanic tribes, and it seeks to deconstruct the existing prevalent image in society and in the public. In the second part, it puts on display how the Berlin Prehistoric Museum itself has dealt with a topic in its history. So it's like a meta exhibition too.
since the history of modern Germany shows how the history and archaeology of the Germanic tribes has been mystified and politically instrumentalized, most notably during National Socialism, but also still today. And there's a new culture war going on as the alt-right or the new right as they call themselves or like to call themselves is challenging museums everywhere um, but also in Germany of course um, with their own agendas and challenge the missions of the museums that I work for. So we designed a workshop that counters such movements. Students learn how history is a construct that produces an image, and they learn how to analyze and deconstruct this image. They explore the reasons why the topic of the Germanic tribes, die Germanen in German, lends itself well to political instrumentalization, and they analyze how the extreme and alt-right movements use this topic in their symbols and codes in their cultural politics today and how they are using the site of the museum as a stage to showcase and broadcast their right-wing ideologies. And also sometimes how they mask these ideologies in mainstream thought. All right. So to give you an example, on the, <clears throat> I'm showing you three pictures and I just said that um, we're using the objects to um, learn about codes and symbols. So on the left side, you see um, a little bronze ornament from the late 6th um, or early 7th century of the Common Era, which is basically three to 400 years after the Germanic tribes um, could have produced this. So this thing is, this object is much younger and it is not Germanic at all. Um, it is, dis it is on display in the museum, in the prehistoric museum, which is housed in the Neuss Museum on the Museum Island in Berlin. It is not part of the Germanic tribes exhibit. It is in a different room that deals with the Middle Ages, as it should. Um, it was, that's, that's what the archaeologists have found out and what they theorize. It was used as an ornament on women's belts. Um, and as an adornment, basically. Um, on the, the middle of the central, central image shows how, or shows an ornament um, that, is, that can still be seen today in the Webesburg, which is a castle in Westphalia, in East Westphalia, um, that the National Socialists refurbished in the 1930s and 40s as a special SS castle or SS leaders and gatherings. And this is in one of the towers. It's a floor ornament. And you can see the you can you can see the parallels. You can see how the ornament on the left served that was that was worn on the belt served as um, an example or yeah as as a also pictorial and visual example for that the other symbol that the SS used. Um, just a little bit more background here. The National Socialists had an own office for dealing with um, Germanic heritage. Um, and then they also had sometimes even a little bit of a, um, well, conflictual situation with another office that the SS had, the also Germanic heritage, it's called Ahnenerbe. And that, that office sponsored um, many um, archaeological excavations that were made in order to trace back um, the so-called Aryans to the Germans um, and to find more historical and archaeological facts to argue for white supremacy um, and a racist composition of society, of course. Um, so this as it came later to be known, Black Sun um, was put into the Weber's book, and which meaning the Nazis attributed it attributed to this ornament is unknown. Um, it came, it had a second career, or yeah, the Black Sun had a second career in 
uh, neo-fascist and extreme right-wing movements. And it still uh, is going on. on. Because if you look on the right-hand picture, you can see a, um, a neo-fascist rally. Um, you can see the NPD flag, the Nationalist Party of Germany, which is under um, surveillance, of course. Um, you can see the Young Nationalists, the, its youth organization flag. You can see um, a German imperial flag with a Prussian eagle on it. And then you can see that Black Sun flag, um, which has had a remarkable career since the early 1990s. It is used worldwide as a, um, as a symbol for neo-fascist organizations. And it has come to serve as a stand-in for the swastika because showing the swastika in Germany is uh, unconstitutional. It's illegal. You can get arrested for that. But this actually, this symbol is, um, is allowed. So, and we are tracing basically, or we're showing that how the, the National Socialists in their instrumentalization of archaeology and history didn't um, chew away from making mistakes or accepting that something that clearly was not Germanic um, what was Germanic. Um, and then you can see that the neo-fascist movements um, who also like to put themselves in the traditions of the Germanic tribes um, can make two connections, one to fascism and one to the, to the Germans, as they call them, and to, to use a romanticized um, image, which is um, easy to create because archaeology and both history leave us with uh, a lot of void still, although we know quite a bit uh, about the Germanic tribes, it leaves us with a lot of voids to be filled. Uh, and that is why this whole uh, topic is so vulnerable to uh, instrumentalizations and political ideologies. So this is a workshop that will start next week. And we also have uh, already have a um, couple of bookings and we are excited to see what, what will happen. Um, just to, um, one more thing to, to um, notice or to note the urgency and relevance of this. In my Twitter feed, um, I received an, or, or a tweet about a young person who is very actively engaged in anti-fascist activism, and he received a death threat, um, like five lines of racial slurs and we're gonna get you, plus a him hanging uh, from, from a tree, so he would be hanged. Um, and next to that was the same sign of the black sun. So it's, it is being used uh, in a dangerous manner. It is a threat to our democratic um, society and to our social fabric. fabric. So um, let me um, talk a bit more what, what uh, putting together this education program for this exhibit means or meant for us and means for the program. Um, for the purpose of designing this, we reached out to institutions who could consult with us, um, experts in anti-fascist activism, anti-fascist education, and prevention of right-wing violence and um, activism. We also recruited educators with experience in teaching how to deal with conspiracy theories, fake news, and neo-fascism. And on the basis of our consultations with experts, we developed a plan to counter all efforts of the right wing of right wing activists to disrupt the exhibition. All this was um, new to the museum, and going forward with it now, we will observe and learn for our future programs. And with that, I come to another aspect. Speaking of observing and learning, the good thing uh, about this project is that it features a built in assessment component, a transdisciplinary working group consisting of education experts with whom I'm working on an agenda to establish political education in museum contexts. While its one purpose is to evaluate our education programs, its real potential lies in its function as an interest group or maybe even pressure group in light of what we've heard before from um, Karen, um, who can set into motion the changes within the museum necessary to make political education an integral part of its mission, thereby expanding it to meet the new museum definition proposed, but unfortunately not accepted by ICOM. I don't know if you remember that. Um, 
but let me put that into uh, on display here or quote from it. Museums are democratizing inclusive and polyphonic spaces for critical dialogue about the past and the futures. Acknowledging and addressing the conflicts and challenges of the present, they hold artifacts and specimens in trust for society, safeguard diverse memories for future generations, and guarantee equal rights and equal access for heritage um, to heritage for all people. They are participatory and transparent and work in active partnership with and for diverse communities to collect, preserve, research, interpret, exhibit, and enhance understandings of the world, aiming to contribute to human dignity and social justice, global equality, and planetary well-being. I find this a, I find this a very good definition, and I'm sad that it didn't come to pass. Um, but maybe we can use this as an inspiration for our work. So the working group is thus the centerpiece of an outreach, in-reach process, both, um, that this project entails. Together, we discuss politicizing museum education. We are thinking through the fact that museum, that the museum as such cannot be not political and that we have to act accordingly, not least because we carry a high social responsibility. So if that has sparked your interest and your curiosity and you would like to exchange ideas or thoughts about this, um, in addition to your general questions in the Q&A, um, please get in touch with me. Um, I am showing you my, so sorry, this is, but this is what I just read. Um, this is my email address. Uh, I have another one on that I left on hop in or get in touch with me here. Uh, I will be in the speaker's lounge. So I'm looking forward to discussing with you. I think we have another 10 minutes or maybe even a little bit more. Thank you. Okay, yeah, please feel free to ask questions. We can see them in the chat. Okay. Uh -huh. so, you so, see it? There's yeah. Lawrence who's asking, what kind of workshops are you offering? For young people. So one of mm -hmm. the workshops um, I described, that was the one um, for countering uh, conspiracy theories and fake news by way of looking at the Germanic tribes exhibit um, and, well, trying to come up with ideas how to counter these. Um, the other one uh, that we have just um, put together and this which is also starting in the fall is um, quite more open so we invite young people usually there are school groups who come um, we invite them to the house bastian there they gather um, and then they develop questions then they venture out to the museum island where they have a number of museums they can attend art museums archaeological museums um, and some ethnology stuff too um, the humboldt home is not far but that is to open later um, and there they can explore with their own interests and their own questions um, connections between their life worlds and what, what, what moves them and what has moved other people in the past and what they have produced in terms of objects and address the big questions um, that we find in the human experience. Um, that sounds very abstract and I wish I could tell you a little bit more about it, but they have not started yet, so I can't give you any examples. Um, but we have developed a couple of methodologies, how to make these connections happen and to have the young people talk about um, how they find the museums, how they, if they um, perceive of them as, well, spaces of power, political spaces, uh, if they can make connections and if not, and if yes, how they, what that means, and if not, what the museum could change. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Margarita wants to know if there is a written text or links that describes your work. Could be also in German. Okay. She said. Yes. Um, so right now we have a web page uh, at the House Bastian. You can um, access that via my profile here and hop in, or you can just um, put in a search engine House Bastian, and there you will find the two um, the two workshops um, the, uh, as ads, and then you will find um, the um, you will find a project description, a brief one, uh, plus the fact that there will be a working group. And I'm just putting together the working group. And if you are uh, interested in having a conversation about that, um, we can do that one-on-one. -on -one. 
or in a digital format um, sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. And a really difficult question, but it's very important. Can you measure yeah. some impact? Impact is I also... Would, yeah, I would love to measure impact. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, we have. So, so yes, we are measuring impact. Um, we have developed a couple of um, evaluation tools within the museum and with our colleagues, so we can standardize this and not like compare apples with oranges, uh, because the House Bastion is only one of many um, education uh, instances. Um, it's the center, right? But there, every museum has its own, and there's even the lab border. Um, the poster of which is behind you, uh, Claudia. Yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. That tries out new uh, concepts and um, formats. And we are learning from them too. Um, but we will also get in touch with outsiders who can help us do that in the working group. Fine. And do you have a number, just amount of how many people you're working with? Is there a question? Oh, okay. Oh, good question. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm in the phase now of reaching out to as many experts as I can and mm -hmm. to uh, see whether they're interested and then put together a working group that might consist of several parallel or working groups working in parallel and then having them um, meet in a, something like a clausura tagung, like a, um, a conference uh, once a, qu a quarter or uh, once and a half year. No, how so, many young people they oh, also young want to people. know? Your audience. Um, my um well usually they're they come in with their schools um yes. and so the imp well we'll have to see how many um bookings we get i can't i have no numbers yet that mm -hmm. you can ask me that in half a year and again the question is there a website or a link people want to inform themselves yeah um go to my profile here or go to <laughs> Go to uh, look at Staatliche Museen Berlin or, or Haus Bastian, put that in. Um, it's, you can find that on my Twitter, you can find that on my LinkedIn, you can find that on my profile here. Okay, but the last question that I want to ask because it sounds really interesting. What is, do you see it? What is your opinion on the critical discussion surrounding the introduction of problematic ideologies or ideas in okay. educational settings? Yeah, where is that? I need last question from last Julia question. Una. Ah, okay. Oh, for my idea or ideas and mm -hmm. uh, which that may have a different. How can you raise political oh. awareness? Okay, yeah. Um, well, we have a lot of um, memorial centers and also um, documentation centers in Germany dealing with the, the past of National Socialism or of the SAD, like communist dictatorship, and we can learn from them. Um, we are. Uh, not displaying any um, Nazi artifacts. We're just showing how the artifacts that served as examples for the Nazis to to, ins to be instrumentalized. So um, I, I know it's difficult. I mean, the Deutsches Historisches Museum, the German Historical Museum, they have things like that on display, and it's it still it still works. Um, but I know it's, um, we. So with school groups, it will be easier to monitor what the outcome is. Uh, and we have our educators um, who are experienced in, in working with, with school groups and working in political education um, to take a stand and to explicitly discuss if something is okay or not okay. Um, in, our, um, in the exhibit itself, we have devised a plan of how to counter that. So there will be a no tolerance policy um, if any, there's any proclamations of uh, national socialist, racist, anti-Semitic nationalist um, thought, uh, verbalized or in symbols, these people will be uh, um, extorted out, uh, out of the museum. So. Mm -hmm. And are there also special tools that you're offering um, besides the content? Yeah, um, uh, yes, um, but these tools are like, used in the workshop themselves. So. Um, I can't talk about them yet because we have to test them. Okay, fine. Yeah, as I see, there are so many questions. Okay, the last one, what is there? I have some question for you. What are the participation levels of audience? Of in audience, community in your education project. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what did you do? Well, to uh, maintain the relationship with your audience after the project finished. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Again, for the long term, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Well, very good. So. It has not finished. It has just started. 
um, and we're keeping that in mind. Um, yeah. So one workshop I had with experts yesterday uh, for the working group, not with not an education workshop, but a professionalization workshop, was um, that we talked exactly about sustainability, long-term effects, um, evaluation, but also engaging young people, also and involving, and this is very much in turn with um, with what David uh, Viom said, um, involving people as experts in our programs so that basically we will change perspectives and have, and this is my goal, have young people educate museum specialists. Yep. Right? So, and uh, this sounds a little bit lofty right now, but you'll find a format for that. Thank you, Leonard, so far for this interesting presentations and all the questions. Um, I want to say again, you have time, you are available, no? Yes. To I'm, chat with the community yes. in our speaker right. lounge. Please right. um, use this opportunity that we offer you from one to two o'clock, and then you can chat or speak directly via video with Leonard meeting again and yes. asking the questions that haven't been answered so far. Yes, and please yes? Um, okay. do, do send me other messages. Um, I'm here. I don't know what's, what's on the and program. And you will be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What's on the program now, Claudia? Now is the program. We have now a little break for okay. 10 minutes. Um, you can do the networking function again. Meet oh, okay. people that you haven't seen before. Take a coffee or take a rest. And then we will meet again on the main stage with our panel to social impact. Great. Can I have that? chat history somehow you want to have the chat history yes <laughs> um is that possible to get the chat history for leonard i'm just asking yes we, we are cupping it we are okay, cupping the questions you. so that you got everything super so um claudia thank you very much thank you uh, thank also you to uh, sebastian jabosch for tech support this worked very well and i'm looking forward to um chatting with you later and seeing you again yes we're okay. doing the same so okay. see you later see you later bye 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 <laughs>